and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. So you get the you get the bite from the little nasty creature. You, you get the red. How do they? You go into the doctor. Is there a blood test or something to yeah, get and, a positive? And that's what's interesting. Yes, the tests are tricky because it takes you and, and you see online. You can get all these online to you know, get tested for Lyme disease now. Mm -hmm. And you know these tests are great, but they're not great early on. It takes about oh. six or so weeks to develop antibodies. So you have oh. to have the disease for a while, and so. And that's the problem is sometimes you just don't remember having a tick on you. It's one sure. thing when you see it like a wood tick. We've all seen those. Those are the big flatter ones that right. you, you recognize right away. Right. Deer ticks, particularly if it's a nymph, are so dang small. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to see it. Mm -hmm. So it'll just sit there, drop off you when it's had its fill and, and move on. I mean, that's, yeah. that's literally what happens. Sure. So little bastards. But I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a it, family it, show. Oh, I'm Chris. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nonetheless, Why? I have an intense dislike for ticks. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's understandable yeah. because you, you been diagnosed yeah. with the antibody. So you've had it for a while. Is that yeah, accurate? Well, they, they didn't do the lab. I forgo, I, I forgo having the lab test done because it was pretty obvious with the rash and sure. some of the other symptoms, the cardiac symptoms I was experiencing. And and so the doctor felt like, no, we're just going to throw you on uh, antibiotic for a month. And, and sure. that's what happened. And, and I'm good to go. Yeah, because I remember we were biking. biking. We were doing some sprints. And Chris is typically faster than I am. And, and, I, and I was like keeping up with him almost past him. It's like, yeah, I'm getting in better shape. And then Chris says, yeah, something's going on with my heart. It's like, is it a heart attack or what? We found out it was from the lions. Yeah, and, and it really, and it, but it still took another, what, five, six weeks for me to get better from that with antibiotic therapy too. Right. I mean, I didn't really come around until about last week. Yeah. What so, about the rash? Is that clear? Rash is gone. Rash went away Ooh, last good. week. So it, it went away last Saturday, to be honest. So right. it, it, I had the rash for five weeks. Yeah. So, and that's about normal and it's, it's, and it spreads too. So it's not always just located where you get the bite. Yeah. It can go all over. I mean, I ended up, I had it here, here, wrist, arm, legs. So I had it all over. Okay. So, and that's more common than what people believe. And you got bit where? Right here, kind of in the groin That's area. very interesting because that's exactly where I got bit. Yeah, and it is. They like to, you know, they're sneaky little buggers. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they like to go where they're not going to be seen, and they can just, you know, because it takes them a while to feed. I mean, they'll hang out and feed for a long, long time to engorge themselves, like days. Oh. So, I mean, it's it's one of those things where, and so if you do get a tick on you, the best way to remove it is thin those tweezers where basically you can, you want to grab right by the head at the base where the tick is yeah. actually inside you. And you want to pull straight out. You don't want to twist because if you twist, you can leave the mouthpieces in there. And the mouthpieces are barbed so they can get a good attachment so they can just suck away. Yeah. So it allows them, it's just, you know, they were, I would call it nature, one of more nature's impressive beasts because they, they know what they're doing. I mean, they inject you with an anesthetic so you can't feel them. And they're just, like I said, they're sneaky little buggers. So they feed, they drop off and they move on. But, you know, if, it, if what most disease specialists suggest is that it has to be in place for 24 to 36 hours for you to actually even pick up sure. Lyme disease. So it's not common for you know not every tick bite's going to infect you and the bigger and that's why the nymphs are so dangerous because we can't even see those things mm -hmm. uh whereas an adult you're like oh i got a tick on me uh, and yeah. so we take care of business right so okay the only other thing before we get into how to uh some treatment and how to avoid getting these uh bites uh this started this was discovered in the united states yeah yeah 1970. yeah 1975 um lime connecticut um uh, <laughs> basically they, so that's how it's got its name yep that's how it was named lime connecticut so and basically a, a woman had just recognized that we had that basically it was 51 cases that this woman observed and 39 of them were kids and they all had basically arthritis. Mm -hmm. So that's unusual, you know, kids under the age of 14 yeah. having a big swollen joints, pain, you know, and, and as the progression went on, I mean, it, you know, there was more and more studies. I mean, Yale uh, kind of started to pioneer most of the studies sure. with it. And then there was also a very special, you know, Willie uh, Bergdefer. He was the guy that basically isolated the disease and, in 82, it was named Lyme disease officially. Okay. Uh, and, and like by 1987, it was a named disease state. But then by that time, it had been spreading. And it seems like in the last five or 10 years, the spread is... The last 20 years, it's been pretty dramatic. And we'll see if we can attach that to the end of this too. You okay. can just kind of see the spread. It's actually a scatter map where they use little tiny dots to just show cases. 
and you can see out east and through Minnesota and Wisconsin uh, in particular. Yeah. Uh, it's so pretty we're, much dark. We're in that we're, area. We're in the, yeah, right. Basically, uh, if you look in the United States map, I-90, they call it the Tick Highway. That's so, that interstate yep, section I, yep. going right by La Crosse. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah. And, and it is, like I said, it's the number one vector-borne illness around. So ticks, you know, as I said, you know, it was an egg. They're disease-free. They attach to a mouse. They get bigger. They go to the nymph. Then they find a bigger blood meal, and then they become their adults. So they and, just and evidently... Sp- they do go to deer, and I don't know how yep. the, how deer that name people, would be just ma- it's just mammals. But I mean, it's I think they find them, and it's a, actually it's a black legged tick. Yeah. So, but we call them deer ticks, right? Yeah. So specifically, so how do we prevent it? That's a big topic. Yeah, there. Like, prevention is kind of interesting. This is where it kind of got you know I, I kind of looked at both natural and and chemical treatments. Right. So you know you can uh, there's a lot of repellents out there. They hate the smell of lemons. They hate the smell of eucalyptus. Uh, so those are more natural treatments that do repel as well as DEET. But and you want something like 20% DEET, but a lot of people are not crazy about DEET because there are, you know, some people can get some nervous system problems yeah. with excessive DEET exposure. Sure. And when you compare it to permethrin, which is a which actually comes from it's an extract from a chrys- chrysanthemum, um, the flower. Oh, sure. Mums would be <laughs> Mums. another. But uh, you know, so when you look at that one, the half percent uh uh per, or, Permethrin is actually a, I choked on my words, I apologize, <laughs> permethrin. Um, so when that one seems to be more effective, in a lot of cases, when you treat your clothing with it and let it dry, uh, the the scent is, at, I mean, it'll, a tick will curl up and fall right off. They cannot deal with permethrin. But so DEET is not quite as effective. Permethrin, where do you get that? You can get it online. You can go to like a Cabela's. You can go to just any kind of outdoors store. And just store. look at the active yeah, ingredient. And you want, yeah, and if you just go and you go to their bug repellent area, like probably the camping section would be sure. most sporting goods stores or online. Um, you want a good permethrin-based and it's 0.5%. Oh. And you can treat your clothes with it. It's not generally recommended to put directly on your skin. Okay. Um, but, it, you know, you can put it on your shoes. I mean, if you, and, you know, and prevention is, you know, the key to avoiding tick bites. So when you're outside, we want to make sure we're wearing pants. We want to tuck our socks into our pants. So don't look too cool, but it definitely yeah, works to keep to them. cover up. You know, if you had long, the longer the sack, probably the better. Yep. yep. So you depending can, on if you're going to lay yep. it, like you said, but you know, and they keep them so they have to work to get to your skin. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, and then you know, it's like when they're out there and what they call, you know, when ticks are on the hunt, so to speak. I mean, they, they detect our CO2 and our perspiration and smells. So they're really sensitive little they critters. Can, they can sense do that? like oh. a mosquito does. They sense, you know, you're breathing your CO2. How do they do? They ask them or what? I don't know. I, <laughs> Well, I would take a room of a thousand ticks and I would actually start to individually question each one because that's the kind of guy. That's how well, I roll. You know, sometimes you, you wonder how they. No, you know, but, but anyways, they, I, I they, could, they've, they've figured it out. Some smarter sure. people than you or I, for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a bugologist. Bug, yeah, there you go. Entomologist. But they, uh, <laughs> but they found that they're pretty. So, you know, what they do when they're hunted, they call them a quest. So I don't know if they're into like Lords of the Ring or something, but they call it questing. So they kind of hang out in, on leaves and, and blades of grass and they kind of extend their legs and you walk by, they'll just kind of sneak right on a board and then they're going to start to look for a place to eat. Kind of like Velcro, you know, or it just catches. And yeah, kind of. I mean, they're, they're sneaky and they're opportunistic, but they, they sense you coming and they're ready. And so they just know that there's going to be a meal on their way. So sure. they just see meal tickets. So they don't yeah. care if you're a person, a deer, a mouse, a bird, right. lizards. They found it on all sorts of different things. Sure. Uh, so once they attach, they go to a, and usually, you know, your bites are going to be, you know, the hairline and the groin area in particular, because those are not areas that people readily check. Sure. So if you've been hiking, oh, the other thing while we're talking about prevention before I digress too far, um, when you're walking on trails, try and walk more in the middle, sure. you know, away from, you know, and in your yards, keep everything kind of pruned. And yep. so if you're on a wooded yep. lot, you want to make sure everything's kind of trimmed back, mow your lawn regularly. Walking those, through tall grass, those, brush, or those are things prime targets. So those are the things that you want to do to avoid. And then mm. when you get back, uh, either use a mirror so you can check your body backside, all the weird cracks and crevices you normally don't look at, uh, cause that's where they're going to be. Um, or just a trusted loved one that can kind of look you over real quick. And what time of year is it most prevalent? Well, temperature wise, I'm assuming. Temperature wise is kind of interesting. They like hot and humid is, is what's ideal, but it can't, you know, you can't be like you said, you were talking about deer hunting, right? Deer hunting is a, a prime opportunity, even though it's colder, the adults are out 
you know, looking for a meal. So, but it's more prevalent in spring and summer. Okay. But you can get bit in the winter, even as low, you know, they used to think that, you know, it had to be like a 70 or 80 degree day for a tick to be active. Well, they found ticks are active in the forties, like in December in Wisconsin and Minnesota. So sure. you get that nice day and you're out there, oh, I mean, I they'll, they'll hide in the underbrush and leaves. So if it's not really snow packed. Right. I mean, I so you just have to be mindful yep. that it's kind of a year round problem. And, you know, because we're such a mobile society, you know, if you end up with symptoms, just make sure you say, hey, I was in a tick area. Right. Can we be, you know, can I be checked for Lyme? Especially if you're like in a stage two where it's been like four weeks or a couple mm -hmm. of months um, and you got weird symptoms. You don't know what the heck's going on uh, and they can't figure it out. You know, just, I don't know, you know, I was in Wisconsin, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, New York, New Hampshire, wherever. But those are all high tick bearing areas. And, and you know, let's not forget about our friends over across the pond. There are very similar tick borne Europe? diseases in Europe yeah. and UK and, and those areas as well. So sure. it's, it's good to be mindful of these types of infections. Sure. And the treatments are going to be the same no matter where you go. Okay. So, so they're going to work with the antibiotic, the antibiotic yeah, for it, that bacteria. Exactly. And so it's, you know, the, the primary one is doxycycline, which is a tetracycline antibiotic. So it's usually a hundred. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But it's lots it's, of lots lot, of big words lots there. of words, but it's it's the drug of choice. You want to be on it from fourteen to twenty eight days, yep. depending. And the studies vary. I would tell you three weeks to four weeks is probably most ideal because it's it's a tricky thing to test. I mean, there's some studies that say seven to ten days is enough. I flatly disagree with those. Mm. I I think that I've seen enough people in, in my profession yep. come back, man, I'm back for more, and it's just it didn't treat it. So I mean, if we sure. treat it long enough and strong enough, right out of the gates, that's great. But you know, what do you do? if you're allergic to tetracycline type drugs like doxycycline, well, then you can use amoxicillin, which is a penicillin based or ceftriaxone, which is a cephalosporin based drug. And that's drug. all stuff your doctor. Your doctor is going to take care of business. So you don't yeah. necessarily have to, I mean, your doctor is going to know, but those are the big three drugs. Sure. And basically it's doxycycline to amoxicillin. If you're allergic to penicillin, then you go to ceftriaxone. Okay. So that's kind of the progression. All right. Office. Well, uh, everything I wanted to know more and, and sometimes less, uh, but very interesting, very informative. Uh, I learned a ton that I didn't know about these little creatures. Yeah, that, I, le I learned more than I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> but I felt like I was And you're feeling to. much better. I feel much yeah, better. Right. 100%. So, absolutely. So it's treatable, guys. You bet. And the sooner the better. So if, if you do recognize just weird stuff, think about where you've been. Because and let your doctor know that you're in a tick area because uh, oftentimes Lyme's is missed. If you go down, you know, let's say you live in Florida, uh, there's cases where people have had heart transplants because they missed the Lyme's diagnosis. Sure. So that's how bad it can get. So it's it's one of those things that it goes along. You can have basically chronic Lyme's disease, which yeah, so it's I just we got to pay attention. Just be knowledgeable about it. Just remember, that, could I have been somewhere outside where I got bit by a tick? Yeah. You've got one of the most active audiences I know. Yeah. So that means you guys are out there doing, which is the best thing for you we just have to be smart about it sure all right very good thank you chris we appreciate the uh wonderful information and be careful and tick free thanks guys